So I talk about my Windows Home Server an awful lot, but I don't think I've ever actually shown it to you guys. So here it is in its current configuration. It's running Windows Home Server V1, and I actually just recently made some changes to it. So I went from a, an LG A775 configuration to a Xeon board and a low-power Xeon 1155 processor. I've got some old-school Aneon memory in there. Remember Kimonda? Yeah, they're out of business. So I've got two gigs of RAM. Um, I actually recently changed the power supply as well. I used to have an 850 watt power supply in here. I've gone to a 1050 watt power supply, but that's not actually because I needed the extra wattage, but rather because I needed a power supply that had the ability or the, uh, the foresight to separate and put the peripheral connectors on two separate rails. So that way I'm able to plug in my up to 24 drives in the front to two separate rails on the power supply. The other one had all of the peripheral connectors running off of a single rail, which overloaded it as soon as the drive started to spin up, even when I turned on staggered spin up, which means that the drives, some of them spin, and then the other one spin, and the other one spin, so they don't all hit your power supply at the same time. So that was why I went with a different power supply. I'm using a Norco case that has a, uh, SFF uh, 8082 or whatever, whatever this connector is called, I can't remember. So up to four SATA or SAS channels per connector, although I'm only running SATA drives because I am running Windows Home Server. Right, I also recently changed my SSD. So I had my Corsair, uh, what was it? I can't even remember. I posted this on Twitter because I thought it was pretty lulls, but uh, my Corsair S series, so this was back with the uh, when they were using the Samsung controllers. I posted this on my Twitter as like a tombstone outside. So this is the first SSD that I've actually had legitimately die on me um, when I had it deployed. And I think the reason for that is just Windows Home Server really trashes your boot drive. Windows Home Server V1 is what I'm running because it uses it not only as the OS, but also as a storage drive as part of the drive pool, which balances itself around all the time. So it just really gets hit. Uh, pretty hard. So I went with an Intel drive just because, you know, re legendary reliability and all of that. 510 series just because it's a little bit older so I got a good deal. Um, in terms of the RAID card I'm running, again, this is a bit of an older RAID card. It's not SATA 3 or anything like that but it's an Arica 1680iX. This is a 24 port RAID card. Uh, I think it's got like 256 megs of memory on it. I haven't really upgraded it. Is that 512? 512 megs. I haven't really upgraded it because it hasn't been necessary because I'm not actually running in RAID yet, but I will in the future when I upgrade to Windows Home Server V2 or 2011 or whatever it's called, I'm going to put a proper RAID array because right now I have, uh, well, I have what Windows Home Server V1 was basically designed for and that is the most ghetto possible arrangement of drives ever because V1 is all about taking random assortments of drives and configuring them in the drive drive pool. So what the drive pool does is it redundantly stores all of your data on at least two drives at any, at any given time and it rebalances it constantly to make sure that it stays on at least two drives at any given time. So the performance isn't great, however I can usually get 70 to 100 megabytes per second read and write from the whole server at any given time. But it's really not good enough anymore because I'm editing video directly off the server these days. And so that is what's prompted um, my next upgrade. So here, check this out guys. So I've got uh, any sort of random variety of drives. So there's a Seagate 7200.10, 320 gig drive. And here, let's go through and look at them all. There's another one of those. So let's slide that back in. Here's uh, a 250 gig, 7200.10. Uh, here is uh, an empty one. Here's an empty one. So we got three drives so far. This whole sort of space should be empty here. Uh, three drives, three drives, four drives. So there's a WD one terabyte black. Five drives, another WD one terabyte black, empty. Six drives, a WD one terabyte black. Seven drives, a WD one terabyte black. Eight drives, a Seagate 7200.11, 500 gig. 9 drives, a 7200.10 500 gig, 10 drives, a WD1 terabyte black, 11 drives, a WD1 terabyte green, 12 drives, a WD1 terabyte black, 13 drives, a Hitachi 1 terabyte, 14 drives, a Hitachi 1 terabyte, 15 drives, a WD2 terabyte black, 16 drives, a WD640 gig black, and 17 drives, a Hitachi 1 terabyte. So what I want to do is I want to build Windows Home Server 2 doesn't include 
the drive extender. So I can no longer use my random mishmash of drives here in order to get my, you know, eight or nine terabytes or whatever it works out to of storage over a span of like 16 drives. I have to build a proper RAID array. So what I'm going to do is I am going to get a new boot drive. So you have to have at least, I think it's a 160 gig boot drive for Windows Home Server 2. So I can't even use my 120 gig Intel SSD. I'll have to get something bigger. I still want to go with an SSD for the boot drive. I've still had more hard drives fail over the last few years than SSDs. I've had one SSD fail, and I've had anywhere from about eight to 10 hard drives fail in that given time. Um, and it's not that I don't deploy enough SSDs. I mean, my personal rig has eight SSDs in it for the boot drive, so it's, not really that, I don't think. Uh, so I'm still going to go with an SSD for the boot drive. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to build myself a RAID 6 array with some new Seagate 3 terabytes. Um, the consumer level WD drives aren't that great for RAID these days, so I'll find enough empty ones. Build a RAID array on the card. And then in the Windows Home Server V1 operating system, I will then transfer all the data off the drive pooled drives to the RAID array. And a RAID array has a few advantages. The performance will be dramatically better, and I'll tell you how I'm going to leverage that because a single gigabit per second connection isn't going to do it. Um, performance will be better. Also, it'll be more real-time in terms of the data reliability. So the drive pool takes in the data, then it kind of waits for you to be idle, and then it shuffles it around. Whereas RAID will actually dynamically, in real time, be shuffling it to all of the right places. And RAID 6 can lose up to two drives before you lose any data, as long as you, uh, you know, throw a new one in there and rebuild the RAID uh, before, you know, an additional two drives fail. Like RAID 5, I don't think is reliable enough, because if one drive fails and then another one fails while you're rebuilding it, then you've lost your data. But RAID 6, you can lose up to two. So that's why I want to go with RAID 6. Um, other advantages, I mean disadvantages are that you can't just dynamically throw drives in it and just kind of increase your storage. You have to actually plan it and build it properly, but I don't need that much storage space anyway. So it's not really the end of the world. Okay, it's just Twitter going crazy. Um, yeah, you have to have like all matching drives and stuff like that. It's kind of a pain. You have to just generally manage it better. However, the RAID card should help me because at least with a high-end RAID card, you can uh, you can change the RAID level on the fly if you want. You can add drives to the RAID on the fly if you want. You can remove drives from the RAID on the fly if you want. So that, uh, that'll help a lot. So that's the migration plan here. And then I'm also going to be changing my uh, motherboard because I need more than one PCIe slot. See, there's a single PCIe 16X slot on this board right now. That's where I've got the RAID card plugged into. But I'm going to be adding a quad port Ethernet card next. So I've already added one to my personal desktop. You can see right here I've got an Intel server NIC. It's got four ports on it there. That plus the Intel NIC built into my motherboard is going to give me up to, assuming I'm using Cat6 cables and assuming I have a compatible switch, which is why this is sitting here, is going to give me up to five gigabit per second to anything else that is similarly connected using uh, teaming or whatever it's called. Whatever. So uh, they all work together and you basically combine the theoretical maximum throughput um, of all the ports you're using together. So I'm going to take a new Z77 board that just has sort of all of the uh, all the PCIe slots that I need and then I'm going to still use the low voltage Xeon assuming it'll run in it. I think it should be fine. So I'm going to put this in there, use the Intel Ethernet here, throw another one of those, uh, we'll probably put it in this one so it runs directly off the PCIe controller on the CPU rather than down through the south bridge. Um, and then I'll run the RAID card off this one and that'll give me the expansion that I need to do my 5 gigabit per second connection. Now, the requirement for that though is you have to have a switch that's ready, you have to have a manageable switch. Um, so I'm going to be using this guy as like a couple hundred bucks. And then there's even like a $25 MIR. So this is a 24 port gigabit smart switch. And uh, so what is it? What is it called? It's the ProSafe GS724T300NAS. So I'm really excited to try this out. So that means between my computer here and the Windows Home Server, which is on the other side of that wall, I will have a five gigabit per second connection and then the rest of the house will just be gigabit. And that will give me plus the RAID 6, so the additional performance I'm going to get from not using the ghetto drive pool should give me just screaming performance between those two PCs and then gigabit to everywhere else. So I'm very excited. So basically, I'm going to try and find a cheaper power supply that I can put in here because it's a total waste of this thousand watt. I need a new boot drive. 
I need to get Windows Home Server V2 going, I need to upgrade the motherboard, I need to add the four port NIC, and then I need to get some hard drives. So that is my project over the next little while. It's a bit more of a, sort of, it's a less sexy project than upgrading my personal PC, but I just haven't had the time for a variety of reasons lately. And uh, this seems like more of a priority in terms of uh, increasing my productivity. So that's what I'm working on. Thank you for checking out this update. And don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.